Hey, it's Mercedes with Frameless Media. Tonight, we are reviewing Power Book 2, Ghost Season 3, Episode 10, Divided We Stand. And you guys, this is the finale. And I must say, I was very intrigued. Tons of secrets, lies, and a whole lot of trouble. So there were tons of storylines. So I want to start off with the smaller storylines, and we'll work our way up to the finale. So Rashad Tate. He wins the election and he proposes to Harper. And just when we think that he is now becoming one of the good guys, we see that Rashad has not changed at all. Um, him and Davis are talking. Harper overhears the conversation and she's starting to see that Harper is still kind of doing some underhanded things. So it ends on a cliffhanger there. Now, Harper... In her mind, she has called the engagement off, but Rashad is not aware of that. So it just kind of ends there. As far as this Rico case go, it never was a case to begin with. I already knew that it wasn't going to go anywhere because in the end, Lauren end, ended up on the stand flipping. She flipped on the stand. She did not uh, confess to anything. She pretty much put all the blame on Jenny and saying that she really just doesn't remember. She was forced to say certain things. And that's the end of that. If he gets to walk, Tariq and the others, they are safe. Um, there was no confession. And Lauren was able to reunite with her parents and go back to her normal life. Um, and lastly, Weston Holden. So if you guys remember last episode, uh, Uncle Lucas. Um, now, the news reports that he died from suicide. But we all know that Brayden played a part in his death. And to cover that up, he pretty much pinned a suicide note, making it look like a suicide and put all the blame on Uncle Lucas in order to protect his family, Kiki, as well as Tariq and himself. However, Brayden is kind of, what's the word? Like he's kind of like guilty conscious here. So he talks to Tariq and lets him know that this is, this is not him. Like, you know, he's not built for this. So he basically tells Tariq that he's out. Tariq tries to talk him out of it, but it's too late. He pretty much leaves. And at that moment in time, we're thinking that this was the end of their partnership. This is the end of Brayden's character. But we see later on that Brayden comes to the rescue. Um, but the major storyline here is um, Tariq wanted to know where's Tommy and also is his mother Tasha safe? In order to get those answers, he uh, visits Tommy's mom, Kate. Uh, Kate lets him know, hey, a lady with red hair with the letter came by for Tommy. And she pretty much gave the letter to Tommy, but that letter had uh, personal information that basically had Tasha's address. So that's how Tommy was able to find her. Now, in his mind, a lady with red hair, the only character is Monet. So we thought, but we sooner find out that, you know, there's more to it than that. However, at this moment, Tariq is thinking that it's Monet. So he's pretty much seeking revenge before he can even plan anything. Um, he does run into Tommy. They talk and Tariq finds out the truth. His mother is safe and Tommy and Tasha did talk and they hash things out. So right now there's no more um, bad blood. They are all on good terms with one another. But Tommy warns uh, Tariq, you, you're either in or you're out. You can't keep straddling the fence. One minute you want to be a college student, the next minute you want to be a gangster. It's either one or the other. Tariq chooses to be all in. And lastly, going after Monet is not a good idea. You need to rethink it. Um, he thinks that Tommy might want to join forces with him, but Tommy lets him know, this is not my fight. It's not my battle. And that's true because uh, this is not Tommy's show. Tommy is on Power Book Force, okay? So that's kind of the end there with Tommy. But Tariq, again, he's trying to seek revenge. And now we see him um, go back to school uh, at Stansfield where he runs into Diana. They talk and Diana propositions him on setting up Monet. And Diana is also letting him know that, hey, you know, I'll help you with this as long as you pull the trigger. So Tariq agrees. And everything seems to be going as planned, except it's taking longer than usual for Diana and Monet to leave because they are talking um, in the car while in the driveway. And Tariq is waiting, you know, to make his move, but somebody beats him to it. And a car comes by, we hear gunshots. Monet gets hurt, but Diana is safe. 
She's okay because Monet was able to kind of put her, push her body right in front of Diana to protect her. And Tariq is all the way confused, but he does get a glance of the driver and the driver is Tasha. So Monet ends up in the hospital. She's in critical condition. She's not dead, but she's in critical condition. And her children, Diana, Drew, and Kane are all at the hospital wondering who did it. Diana basically blames it on Tariq. You know, and we found out through a flashback scene that Drew and Diana had planned all of this stuff all along. The lady visiting Tommy's mom, that wasn't Monet, that was Diana pretending to be Monet, setting up all of these traps. And we see that they were trying to basically get Tariq to go after Monet. And then Kane, he, of course, he's going to be upset and want to seek revenge. He will go after Tariq. So their plan really is set in motion right now. And it doesn't look too good for Tariq right now. Now, Tariq does uh, meet up with his mom to get answers. Tasha lets them know, hey, I did what I had to do because Monet has put her in bad situations and harm's way. So she felt like, you know, hey, I'm just returning the favor. And Tariq um, pretty much lets her know that all that money that was saved, the trust fund money, all of it is gone. It's gone because he made a mistake by investing in Western Holdings, which it was a Ponzi scheme. Now, I do want to point out here, most people with a trust fund, I, I wouldn't think to put all the money in one thing. Most people diversify their money. So thought that was a little odd there. But again, it's a show. It's a show. But Tasha lets Tariq know that if you're all in, in order for you to regain that power, the money, and regain all of that, you're going to have to step in and get closer to Noma. You're going to have to be her right hand. You're going to have to fill Monet's shoes. So that means Tariq has to meet with Noma, proposition her, and see if she agrees. But when he shows up, of course, there's some uh, guest surprises. Kane is there, Drew, Diana show up. That's when Tariq learns that um, they're now working for Noma. And also Effie was also working for Noma this whole time, tipping off Noma about you know her child and how she exposed it to Tariq. And, but Noma already took care of all of that to prevent her child from being in harm's way. Tariq now learns that he has no allies at this point. And just when we think that he has reached his end, Brayden shows up and saves the day. We have some gunfire going on and eventually Brayden and Tariq escape. And now we are at war, not with just the Tejadas, but with Noma as well. And that's the end of this episode here. And I must say it's a 10 out of 10. This was a great finale. I can't wait for season four. And I'm I'm just loving this series. I thought that this was great. Like it was so many surprises, uh, tons of secrets. Just trying to see what all what all is going to happen. Now you guys do know Michael Ely is joining the cast for season four. Also, with Monet being in the hospital, I'm just wondering: Are the writers going to write her off? Will we see her in season four, or will she just forever be in the hospital? And also. With the Tejadas versus Tariq, will Tariq really find out that he really just got set up, basically? So, so many questions and no answers for right now until next year. But leave a comment below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys for another review. Bye.